previously on Let's Go Racing. Donington Park was a decent weekend, but definitely room for improvement for both bike and rider. Sadly, Jen isn't here this weekend to help with the filming, so this episode is more of a diary and not quite as pretty. Anyway, let's get back into the here and now with round two on the CF Moto Super Twin at Alton Park. pit lane. Um, let me just change the exposure here. So uh, yeah, last time we had a bit of a um, bit of a tent in a car park. Now we've got a much bigger tent as part of a lorry. Factory racing right here. So we bought the lorry, ignore the branding, and uh, there's the beauty. There's a standard twin, that's another CF Moto. Bit of lunchtime, bit of gossip, and uh, yeah, let me give you a little tour of our, of our new little house. Ugh. And in here, let me turn the ISO up, is our little strip club. So uh, the boys have been working hard and carpeting. We've got toasters, we've got kettles, we've got ovens and stuff. And you know, the pole's going to go just there. Timing will be up there. So we are looking pretty fresh. So obviously, last round was a bit of ups and downs. Um, we have completely replaced the loom on the bike. Well, I haven't. The boys have. And uh, reflashed the ECU. Done loads of other technical stuff, which I can't mention because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, and I've been out for a practice session, and it is better. It's still got a bit of a issue, but it is better. We've, we've had to lower the RPM limit to only 10,000 now. But if you go anywhere near that limit, it's a really hard cut, so you gotta be really careful. Um, I don't really know where I'm going around here, but it feels good, it feels good. Apart from the power issues, we, we're feeling pretty good. We're feeling pretty good, so um, we're still in the development phase of this. Uh, the This day, there are no races today, this is just practice, which I'm actually really thankful for because it means Disregarding the sort of power issue, but it means I can just get a bit more comfortable on the bike and we can work out a bit more of a base setting and adjust rear sets and on all that sort of stuff and, and have a bit of fettle time. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't rain. It looks pretty nasty over there. But I really hope it doesn't rain. Um, I've, done, I've done a couple of laps and it feels pretty good. Uh, so, we'll, we'll see. I've got to over gear it, I have to ride it a gear taller than normal and, and be very careful about the rev limit. But, she feels nice. Getting there, work in progress. So that was um, yeah a bit of a letdown. Unfortunately, the the rain happened. Well, the hail happened for about what a minute. Yeah. Fucked the track up, and then everyone just came in, and that was it. So uh, and now it's not raining. Um, so the that's bad news. But the good news is we're making bacon sandwiches. Or Paul is. Well, yeah, Paul is. Yeah, the chef. No, well I don't do anything. Yummy. So. Um, Unfortunately, the heavens have opened. 
yet again. Um, we did a couple of sessions, a uh, couple of practice sessions, but literally one lap and then it would pee down and now, um, and then dry up and then rain again. But at least now we've got qualifying in about half an hour and uh, it's definitely going to be a wet race. So my picker extraordinaire is uh, putting the wets in. No, he's busy, so I'm putting the wets in. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but yeah, at least. I, I, I'm happy it's full wet to be fair, uh, there's nothing worse than not knowing, going in and out and whatever. And Chrissy Rouse, the legend and uh, uber fan of 44 Teeth, just came up to me and gave me a couple of top tips for riding in the wet round here. Uh, so um, I'm sure I'll forget all of those <laughs> and uh, just try and survive. Basically, don't fall off. Uh, what else have we done? We've also in the practice session we've got a bit more seat foam, uh, so I'm just working on a bit of my adjustment. Do you want a hand there, mate? Oh, all good. Yeah? yeah. So uh, yeah, a bit of, bit of extra height. So this helps my angle. This is Gaz Johnson's uh, setup tips. So it helps me get off the bike a little bit easier. Uh, so it's a, I'm actually finding the whole thing really quite interesting. So uh, yeah, if not a little bit scary, but you know, we're all here to have fun and everyone's in the same boat, literally boat. It's Saturday night, it's hot pants. Uh, hot pants night, Britney Spears night. The classic manky tissue in puddle shot. Right, so uh, it's very wet still. The sun is coming out, but I'm going to go out for first wet session ever and um, see how it goes. So, fingers crossed, we get a decent place and just stay safe, Captain Safety. Fucking Gary's Gash. Oh God. Gary's Gash, it sounds like a strip club in Benidorm. <laughs> so actually, uh, survived, and actually, that in the wet was amazing. And I felt so good on that, to the point where I was in a gaggle of quite fast bikes, and I thought, I've got the pace to go faster than these guys, but I couldn't overtake, because it's really difficult. So I slowed down three, four seconds, put in an absolute belter of a lap. And then sadly at Druid, someone came off quite badly as I came through and um, they red flagged it. So the lap didn't count, but on the, according to the sectors, it was three seconds quicker than the qualifying position. Where did we, where did I qualify? Sorry? Fifth. Fourth. Fourth. Fourth in class. Fourth in class. Fourth. Fourth. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of almost hoping for a wet race because the advantage of that, yes, we've got throttle issues. Yes, it's, it's a, it runs, not great, but it was so much better than most of the bikes around me on in a wet setup. And a lot of that's down to Gary because he knows what he's doing. But um, yeah. Anyway, so a kind of high-ish low. I know the TSL timing. You know, that's the thing with timing. It never tells the, the story of what happened. It's just black and white. There's your time. That's where you start. But um, it's got pace. So fingers crossed for tomorrow. Let's hope it all goes well. And, and uh, I hope. Uh, I hope the Fallen Rider's all right, because it looked, looked pretty bad. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We going to the pub? Yeah, absolutely. Pub? 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 Yeah. Right, we've got some top tips. It's not, not Jack. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Chrissy, Chrissy Rouse. He's going to um, take us round. If you haven't listened to his podcast, I'll zoom in on your hat. Uh, chasing the racing. <laughs> with my accent. Ch chasing the racing. Something like that. Anyway, if you haven't listened to that, go and have a listen because it's it's definitely well worthwhile. Uh, but yeah, he's going to give us some tips on how to get round Alton Park. So as we're heading to turn one here, it's, um, the, the apex is actually blind, and you'll see when we get round, there's a little drain on the on the curb on the inside. A good exit here is to stay as far left as possible in the braking zone. 
and tip in as late as possible. This is the drain I was talking about. So that, yeah, so the single drain rather than the double one. Yes. And it feels like a bit of a ramp that kind of wanna, wants to push you up and out over there. Yeah, uh, another thing is when you walk it, obviously you've got a nice clear vision all the way down the, the avenue. Hmm. But when you're on a bike, obviously you're lent over. You can't see, you can't even see the curb on the outside. So it's it's very much, you have to do at least sort of 10 laps before you get your, your you know, your reference yeah. points and sort of a feel for where you are. Another quick one <laughs> is uh, in the wet, because there's, there's this like sort of dip here, yeah. there's always a, quite a big puddle. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, we could ask you, but that's fucking useless. <laughs> If you watch British Superbikes here, you'll see some people choose to go tight and rail the kerb all the way mm. around. Likewise, you'll see people that give a little bit of room at the beginning, run maybe, give a, like a foot or two off the, the white line and then apex later on. It's it's very much just the setup that you've got on the bike and what right. you feel more comfortable with. So so if you do find yourself coming out wide here and 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 kissing this kerb and going onto this green stuff, it's, it offers in the dry pretty much the same levels of grip. The bike's upright anyway, right? So just don't worry about it. Yeah, if, if you notice just back there, the, the kerbs, uh, like rumbled, I yeah, don't know what yeah. sawtoothed, I believe. Sawtoothed, yeah, and then it goes flat here. This green uh, is off track limit, so for like a, a superbike race or whatever, you would have to, you um, you get penalised. So like saying qualifying, if you went on this, you would get your lap taken f from you. Right. Uh, but they've only recently put this in. I think it's more for the cars. He's a very nice young man, actually, isn't he? Current superstock champion versus old ex wannabe. There's nothing, there's nothing versus about it, you've fucking given up. Has been. <laughs> no, never been. <laughs> it, this is one of the fastest corners on the track, so in terms of places to make time up, it's one of the most important to kind of get Okay, back. yeah. Um, on a big bike, you're, like, you're breaking, there's a little lump there, you're breaking not, not far after that, that lump. Yeah. And it, it's really fast. Maybe back one gear and throw it in. On, on your bike, obviously, you'll be able to, to get close at the corner before you throw it in. But it's really it's really critical to get start from right on the edge of the track and okay. wait as, as late as you dare to commit in. Again, if, if, you, if you're lazy on the entry, you're making the corner tighter than mm. it needs to be. So sort of wait, wait as late as you sort of dare and then really commit. This camera won't pick it up either, but it's proper steep here. But you can probably see it with that group of people in front. Run up the top, you're fit and healthy. I mean, that is, yeah, that, that's your height and some. But the, the, main, the main thing about this corner that would catch out like a novice rider is you've got such a positive camber here and on the exit it just totally levels yeah. out. So you're getting, you're getting loads of grip, loads of grip. And then as you're getting to the point where you're asking for a little bit more throttle, the, the grip level's yeah. like massively reducing. Really important to, to be on the white line on this right-hander. Okay. It's not so critical to, to not run wide through through this first one. The, the next corner is a bit of a nothing corner because you're not full throttle coming out mm -hmm. of it. So therefore, if, you, if you're more patient here through the, this right-hander, it doesn't really it doesn't really then have a payoff afterwards. Okay. So you can so just sort of get to the next corner as fast yeah, as you can, really. Which, whichever, la yeah. If you're on the left hand side of the track, or if you're really yeah. slow through here and on the right hand side of the track, you're still limited by the next corner. So it's, you really want to maximise your speed through this one. Obviously, to get a good ex exit, because this is, that next bit is actually the fastest bit of the track on a big bike. Right. Okay. So yeah, you want to be as close to the left as as you possibly can here and you, you can roll the throttle and obviously that'll load the front and help the turn or the more uh, the, the more confident that you're getting you can then go faster in and having a little dab on the brakes actually helps the bike to turn okay. obviously you've got you've got to be careful not to tuck the front so this is a straightforward standard double apex corner uh, you've got the first curb on the inside here and most most people tend to sort of v this corner so you'll maybe not be on the white line but somewhere close to the kerb on the way in mm -hmm. you're then running a good three quarters of the way out and then bring it back for a late apex where you can just sort of see there where the kerb is yeah and uh, the track tends to be a little bit dirty right out out wide so i wouldn't recommend going anywhere past sort of where cranky is there on the left but you, you also don't 
you do want to be wide enough yeah. to then bring it back for the, for the late apex. So this is the exit of Druid, so this is your kind of second apex. And uh, with this corner, obviously, it's blind with the crest, and it's a little bit like the mountain of Cadwell, where after the crest, the track is still turning. So if you right on the left-hand side, you've still got to turn over the other side of the crest. Mm -hmm. So a little bit like Cadwell, you don't want to be right over to the left-hand side, otherwise you've got to carry a lean angle as the bike wheelies, and it's easy to get crossed up. So you want to be at least a foot or two feet in from the from the crest, and that means as you get over the, the the, the crest, the front end goes light, maybe a little bit of a wheelie, go up on your honkers and... You are, you are, your honkers. <laughs> up on your honkers. <laughs> <laughs> and you're nice and, <laughs> you're nice and straight. <laughs> yeah. I don't know these words. Yeah. And it like lines up with the white line on the outside. Cool. What are honkers? Honkers. <laughs> dip toes, come on. Or on your dip toes, yeah. <laughs> and then the, there's two quite big lumps along the straight here. Yep. Are you getting any wheelie on the twin? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> on the thousand, you've kind of got a, a, like if you just pinned it over, the front end would like come right up in the air. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't think you're having that problem. No. <laughs> on the no. CF bike. It is epic power though, but it's just if you get it's a just normal not... size rider on the bike. It wheelies all day. Long, all right, chill out. Put a giraffe on it and it ruins. All right, it. we're about to run out of battery, so um, I'll just quickly say, and the last corner, that's the wor my worst corner on the track, and uh, I'm just sort of getting through it. Well, let's let's hope the battery lasts. Fast forward. Okay, so in five seconds, run us through. Stop in a straight, you want obviously maximise your speed, so get on the gas as hard and as early as you possibly can on the twin, and then absolutely pinned, nice and tied to the arm core on the left there, and jobs are good. In. For P1. That's, that's your lap of Oulton Park. Thanks, that's, Chrissy. That's your, that's your two, two minute lap. Yeah. Five hour Jack, lap. 44 <laughs> KT. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's off, look. So, uh, yet again, the rain has come. That was a really frustrating, by the way, sorry, good morning. I haven't said good morning yet. It's been a bit of a, uh, a late one. We weren't racing until 12.30, so we all had a bit of a, um, a bit of a relaxing morning. And then, and then it's on, fresh set of tires, got a fantastic start up into P3 in class, I think. And then uh, got red flagged. It all, oh, it also had a warm-up red flag lap as well, so we had to do that again. And then held on the grid, had to do another two warm-up laps, and then another red flag, and now it's raining. So the chance of a, uh, of a nice dry lap, just one nice dry lap this weekend would be great. Um, so it's a little bit frustrating, uh, but anyway, we're changing the wheels out now, and um, no doubt when we put the wets in, it'll dry up. So win-win, isn't that right? <laughs> Jack, have you got a biscuit, mate? little bastard is on the box so uh, yeah good race in the end we did uh, p3 so uh, very happy with that wet track at the start drying conditions uh, fourth fastest lap which means I'm now on out of everyone in the race so now I'm qualifying uh, with grid start fourth yeah which is second row so uh, I just need to stop being such a wuss bag off the start and just raining. get your elbows out. And yeah, it dried out and now guess what? Raining again. 
and it's it's so difficult. Oh, and we've only got one um, front wheel, so when we want to change to wets or dries, we have to actually change the tire on the rim. Smile. Look at now, I'll turn the turn the I'll turn the fucking lens brightness down. Right. But yeah, so uh, so. We're gonna go, because we don't have a spare front wheel, we're gonna keep the wet on for the front regardless. I still think it's gonna, it's it may be dry, but it's still gonna be damp, and the confidence level and of having the grip yeah. is gonna and be Drew, worth it. Right? always holds water irrelevantly of what's yeah. going on, so. And it, and it could just be a master stroke, because if it does start to drizzle in the race again, we're already in exactly. wet setup. And it does go well in the wet. This does feel nice as a wet bike. Um, I think it's because it's sprung quite soft. But yeah, what do I know? But hey, on the box, first piece of silverware, get in. As you can see, and those of you who are watching TSL, you might have seen the massive mega wheelie off the start, and it absolutely ruined it and lost about 15 spaces. Anyway, um, it was a completely bone dry track, as you'll see from the onboard footage, uh, and uh, yeah, the full wets, but then a lot of the grid had full wets on, so we're all in the same boat. However, P2, we got a P2, so um, that is really good going, really happy with that. Uh, and a P4 overall? P4 overall. P4 yeah, overall. And obviously, Mr. Gareth over there was P1, so I'm not going to beat him. And then Tom Booth Amos was up there as well, so, you know. Uh, th this, this bike, by the end of the season, this is going to be a proper weapon. Well, it's mid season and then developed. Yeah, I mean, it, it, all the little tweaks we're doing to it and the stuff we're learning about it, I, I'm. I'm proper on board with this, I think it's just gonna be, um, yeah, an epic bike. But yeah, it's been a good day so far. We've got one race left, um, and it looks dry, so 
I think we're going to risk it for a biscuit. If it stays like this half an hour before the race, we're going full dries. We'll see what happens. So, uh, yeah. Bring it on. Ladies and gentlemen, check this out. Uh, that was a P3 in the last race and a really successful weekend for everyone involved. That's two threes and one second. So that's a podium in all races. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's brilliant. So, uh, you know, super pumped. Massive thank you to CF Moto for giving me a good bike. And this is just the beginning, by the way. This is the this is the test bike. So in round two with an idiot like me riding it. So as the rounds progress, it's only gonna get better and better. So yeah, super happy. It's been a mega weekend and yeah, on to Cadwell Park. Let's just get a close up of the uh, P2. Woo! Yummy, I'm gonna drink my Sunny to light out of that later. <laughs> thanks, bike. thanks, thanks, boys. Standard thanks. Bike. Win. And a standard and a win on the standard bike. Win yes, standard yeah. Bike. Tommy, Tommy did a win as well. So yeah, he smashed it as well. It's been a it's been, it's been a good good Solid round weekend actually. And we've had inquiries on the Instagram channel about how to buy one for the next race season as well. Do you know that? Well, that's the ultimate plan is to create a race package for people to be able to come and get a bike and. and at yeah, level. So and I mean, if I we're doing this for really exactly, and if I can do well on it, then uh, you know, well, anyone can <laughs> exactly. If you have a pulse, <laughs> you can have yes. a myself. Yeah, next time. <laughs> <laughs> get the chef on the case. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So um, that's it, really. Now uh, you guys can pack up. I'm going home. Okay. Bye. Next week it rains and I crash out of P1.